dear Catherine McKenna, good morning to all of you. Today, we are launching the high-level expert group on the net zero emission commitment of non-state entities. And I'm joined by Ms. Catherine McKenna, who will chair the group, and I'm very grateful for that. Before Catherine makes her remarks, let me recap why we are here. The climate crisis is getting rapidly worse. Despite growing pledges of climate action, global emissions are at an all-time high, and they continue to rise. The latest science shows that climate disruption is causing havoc in every region right now. And we are in a race against time to limit global heating to 1.5 degrees, and we are losing. The IPCC has demonstrated that nearly half of humanity is already in the danger zone. If we don't see significant and sustained emissions reductions this decade, the window of opportunity to keep 1.5 alive will be closed and closed forever. And that will be disaster for everyone. Governments have the lion's share of responsibility to achieve net zero emissions by mid-century, especially the G20. But we also urgently need every business, investor, city, state and region to walk the talk on their net zero promises. Hence the launch of this expert group. At COP26 last year, I flagged the need for more credible and robust standards and criteria for measuring, analyzing and reporting on the net zero pledges by non-state entities. Today, we take a step towards meeting that need and ensuring the highest standards of environmental integrity and transparency. To avert a climate catastrophe, we need bold pledges, but matched by concrete, measurable action. Tougher net zero standards and stress and accountability around the implementation of these commitments can deliver real and immediate emission cuts. And the expert group will make recommendations before the end of the year addressing four areas. Current standards and definitions for setting net zero targets, credibility criteria used to access the objectives, measurement and reporting of net zero pledges, processes for verifying progress towards net zero commitments and decarbonization plans, and the roadmap to translate standards and criteria into international and national regulations. The group of respected and independent experts is gender balanced and geographically diverse, with deep experience across government, business, the global financial system, civil society, and academia. The members will work in their personal capacity, and I expect them to consult widely, extensively, and transparently to hear the perspectives and views of all stakeholders. And I thank Ms. McKenna and all members of the group in advance for this vital work, and I wish you the best success in uh, the development of the activities you will coordinate. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary General. It is indeed a great privilege to uh, accept the role of chairing this group of experts on such a vitally important issue at such a vital, vitally important time for climate action. So let me start by thanking you for your leadership and first identifying the crucial need for stronger and clearer standards and criteria for net zero commitments made by everyone from businesses to investors to cities and regions in Glasgow last November. As you said at COP26, we have a deficit of credibility and delivery and a surplus of confusion. And let's be clear, while it's great to see an avalanche of net zero pledges, they aren't a get out of jail free card. You need to do the work to deliver real, ambitious and immediate emissions cuts in a transparent and verifiable way. Much has changed in just the, these past four months, but the need you identified at COP26 is more pressing than ever. This is a make or break moment. The decisions and actions that the world takes now will decide whether or not we have a chance to limit warming to 1.5 degrees 
and ensure a sustainable planet for future generations. The scientific evidence continues to mount. Missions can continue to rise. The climate crisis getting worse with real impacts on people's lives and livelihoods around the world. And the role of non-state actors, whether corporations, investors, cities, or regions is more crucial than ever. We need every pledge backed up by robust, credible delivery plans so that they are implemented in full as quickly as possible. That is ultimately what this expert group is about. Just as the world's response, responses to climate must be based on science, I warmly welcome your decision, Secretary General, to engage experts across all key disciplines needed to fulfill the group's mandate to take action to raise ambition and environmental integrity across the four areas you identified. The 15 other colleagues you have assembled uh, are deeply respected for their breadth and depth of experience, knowledge, and insight, their independence and impartiality, and their proven records in their fields from science to government to academia to civil society to business. It is an honor, to say the least, to be chairing this group, and I look forward to getting started with my colleagues in the period immediately ahead. Of course, we certainly do not have or claim to have a monopoly on insights and perspectives on this complex issue. And so I look forward also to the many consultations we will have in the months ahead. Reflecting also on my own work now and in the past, I'm also proud to be chairing a group that is gender balanced. That was personally important to me as women have long been leading the way on climate action and they need to be at the table. Also important is representation from regions around the world. I thank you again, Mr. Secretary General, for this vital initiative and for your trust in me and in our colleagues in this group. We will work tirelessly to fulfill this mandate because that is what the gravity of the climate crisis urgently requires. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.